Thank you for staying with us on the Joy News Prime on this Independence Day edition. I'm Gary L. Smith. We begin with the UEFA Champions League, where the big game of the week is happening at the moment. Real Madrid are away at Paris Saint-Germain. Let's get the update on that right now. It's still 0-0 in this game. As they have just gone to half time, lucky us, able to see that. So it's still 3-1 to the reigning champions on aggregate. As you know, Neymar didn't start, but Zidane opted to go with Vasquez in there. No Tony Cruz, no Luka Modric as well, and also Isco is on the bench. Ronaldo begins, and no Bill also in the starting lineup. For PSG, they, go, they went to Verratti, Cavani as well, and uh, Di Maria. It's his time to shine in the absence of Neymar. Whether he can do it, we have 45 minutes to find out. In the African version of the Champions League, tomorrow is a big day for Adriana Stars. They will be hosting the Algerian side, Setif, and the coach of the Doma Base club, Yusuf Abubakar, is confident of their chances of beating their opposition. The next stage is going to be tougher than this. So we have to do a lot of things. We have to search them, work on their mental toughness, look at the the tactical approach of the game and all that. So we do a lot of work and we have to prepare very well. Uh, we are here to get something about them. Uh, so in the next uh, 48 hours, uh, I've already planned of getting their clip of which we will look at it and see how best we can approach the next game. We are not resting at all, especially myself. I'll give the boys some two days to rest and then we'll come back strongly. But I have to start doing the groundwork from tomorrow. I will make sure that I will qualify to the group stage. Still, to speaking about the Ghana Premier League, and yesterday I did give you an update on what the um, outcome of the meeting between the Football Association and Great Olympics was, and it was in simple terms, uh, something that they were unable to agree on. So the GFA and Olympics will head back to court in a couple of days if the court is able to move the date forward as the GFA wanted. But uh, still bringing you updates of that interview we had with Randy Abbey over the weekend. He said the country's football governing body need to change their model of operations to respond to current trends. Uh, the fact that something worked 14 years ago doesn't mean it will work today. You have different... Um, environments, you have different circumstances, you have different uh, uh, happenings and all that. And so if you have a model that worked 14 years ago and you have not really reviewed this model, tweaked it for it to respond to um, current situations, you would have a big problem. Now, let me summarize this this way. You, you cannot, they say that you cannot do the same thing over and over again and expect, expect different a different results. result. Yeah. We are in search of a different result, but we are doing the same thing over and over again. That's the problem. That's the problem. We have not really reviewed the things that we have done and what we do and whether what we are doing today responds to today's challenges. One of the things, if you, if, you, if you even want to deal with perception and you just follow media and you listen to some of the things people say about the FA, what you would realize is that transparency is a key issue. It is one of the things that you would expect the FA to work on. What are the things that we can do to take away, if you even think it's a misconception, to take away this uh, misconception. What are the things that we need to do to take away this notion that people have about us, this impression that has been created about the association? Because you see, sometimes, sometimes, it is not always about whether it is, you know, in politics, they say that perception is as good as the truth. Sure. That's what they say in politics. But it is applicable in, in anything, especially everything that has an interface with the public. 
from the Ghana Premier League to the English version. And with three months to go until the end of the season, it has become mathematically impossible for Arsenal Football Club to win the title, as if there was any doubt. But even more damning for the manager, Arsene Wenger, is the fact that the records for 2018 are a huge slap in the face. If you're an Arsenal fan, you might want to hold your chair because your club has lost more games in 2018 than bottom place West Bromwich Albion. When they lost 2-1 against Brighton, Arsenal ensured that it was their eighth defeat in the year 2018. West Brom have lost seven. But Arsene Wenger, ever the optimist, is still looking positive and feeling positive despite losing four games in a row now. 24 hours after yet another damaging defeat, there are no obvious signs of a crumbling empire at the Emirates. But fans and former players are turning their back on Arsene Wenger after a fourth successive defeat. It capped a miserable seven days for the club, in which their hopes of a domestic trophy and any lingering top four aspirations have been brutally crushed. Look, uh, I can understand the frustration and uh, what uh, can I say? I think uh, this League Cup situated in the middle of a scene is always very difficult when you don't win it because it brings a lot of negative waves. Uh, uh, we were four times in the last uh, five years in the finals. Uh, we won three, we lost one, but uh, you could see that the uh, one we lost uh, brings a lot of uh, negativity. The manner of Arsenal's latest implosion has raised serious questions from many about Arsene Wenger's ability to remain at the helm beyond the end of this season. But the man himself is characteristically adamant he can turn this poor run around. It's the first time I lose so many games on the trot uh, in my life. And uh, so because I believe uh, uh, our quality, uh, quali uh, the quality of uh, managers as well to try to shorten the crisis. And uh, until now I already managed to do that and I still believe I can do it. Wenger's next challenge is a European one and a last 16 tie against Milan. That is Arsenal's last remaining realistic hope of qualifying for the Champions League because a top four finish now looks well beyond them. We need two teams to collapse and uh, I can't see that at the moment uh, uh, happening because uh, uh, Two teams uh, to drop so many points is very difficult to, to imagine. So Arsene Wenger there, counting and numbering his days. As you know, or may not know, he's paid £11 million every year. If I were in his shoes, I would not be willing to go that easily. But speaking of counting, uh, this is something that is a bit confusing. Because if you are counting down the days, do you begin from the day in question or do you count a day later uh, what i'm talking about is that some reports say that yesterday monday was 100 days until the start of the 2018 world cup and some reports also say it's today in the case of those that said yesterday they began counting today and for those that started counting today they be say that the counting starts tomorrow all very confusing but what we know is that the big kickoff will be in 100 days and we can't wait. It's 100 days to go until the 2018 World Cup in Russia gets underway. All eyes will be on the hosts as they tackle Saudi Arabia in Moscow on the 10th of June in the first action of the tournament. There are still many things that need to be considered for all teams involved, especially in the tail end of the domestic football season. With the Champions League final still approaching, as well as other domestic cup competitions such as the Copa del Rey, DFB Pokal and FA Cup, top players from around the globe can't afford to slow down with the season winding to a close. By now we all know about the big teams set to miss out on the showpiece, such as Italy, the USA, Chile, Holland and Ghana. But in their absence, there are few nations who make their long-awaited returns to the tournament, including Egypt, who haven't qualified for World Cup since Italy in 1990. With the outstanding Mohamed Salah in their ranks, the Pharaohs will be eager to turn some heads in Russia. Germany will begin their title defense on the 17th of June when they go head-to-head -head with Mexico in Moscow. Four years have passed, but the Germans still look as deadly as ever. The likes of Thomas Muller, Julian Draxler and Tony Cruz have just improved over the years and the great bloc himself, Manuel Neuer, will look to lead his nation to yet another crown. 
Spain, as usual, will be seen as favourites, along with France, who have managed to put a torrid few years behind them with a brand new looking team filled with brilliant youngsters. Kylian Mbappe will surely make the cuts, as well as Anthony Martial and Kingsley Coman. All three are capable of terrorising defences with their pace and their eye for goal. There's still the added danger of Paul Pogba and Antoine Griezmann. Both had fantastic European Championships in 2016. For Brazil, it's all about redemption as they look to make amends of their previous World Cup exits. 7 1 to Germany in their own backyard. The memory will never fade, but the time to rectify is now approaching. Brazil and the rest of the world will be sweating on the fitness of superstar Neymar. The PS and that last clip you saw there was of the demolition of Brazil by Germany. And I was in that stadium. It was absolutely unbelievable in Brazil. Anyway, I'll be back at 10.30 to show you the highlights of the Champions League games. At the moment, it's Real Madrid, Real Madrid nil um, visiting in Paris at PSG. I'm Gary Al Smith. I'll see you in a couple of hours.